Hi, it's Michelle with Books Cause Insomnia. I am here today to talk to you about some of the most anticipated books for the spring of this year, which just in case you're watching it in the far future, the spring of 2022. I'm going to tell you my most anticipated books for March, April, and May. And I will be looking at my notes. The first one is Tell Me an Ending by Joe Harkin. The release date is March 1st, and it's a sci-fi slash dystopian book. Across the world, thousands of people are shocked to receive an email telling them that they once chose to have a traumatic memory removed. Now they are being given the chance to get that memory back. It follows four characters grappling with the question of what to remember and what they hope to forget forever. I mean, that's a really thought compelling idea, isn't it? I, th I think this book sounds like it'll be very fascinating. If you want to let me know down in the comments, let me know. Would You don't have to tell me what memory, but if you could, would you remove a memory? <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, part of me thinks, yeah, there's things I would love to forget, but then I've worked hard to become who I am today, and I don't know that I would be who I am now if I hadn't have gone through the things that I've gone through. So I guess I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't remove memories. Hi, Marty. <laughs> if you hear uh, meowing in the background, it's Martin. He came to say hello. <laughs> you probably see his tail, too. The next one is The Night Shift by Alex Finley. This also comes out on the 1st of March. It's a mystery slash thriller. It's New Year's Eve, 1999. Y2K is expected. <laughs> Would you stop it? <laughs> he can't stand attention not being on him. You remind me of me when I was 16. You know that? It's New Year's Eve, 1999. Y2K is expected to end in chaos. Planes falling from the sky. Elevators plunging to earth. World markets collapsing. A digital apocalypse. None of that happens. But at a blockbuster video, that's what got me, in New Jersey, four teenagers working late at the store are attacked. Only one inexplicably survives. Police quickly identify a suspect the boyfriend of one of the victims, who flees and is never seen again. Fifteen years later, more teenage employees are attacked in an ice cream store in the same town, and again, only one makes it out alive. In the aftermath of the latest crime, th the three lives intersect. The lone survivor of the blockbuster massacre, who's forced to relive the horrors of her tragedy. The brother of the fugitive accused, who's convinced the police have the wrong suspect, and FBI agent Sarah Keller, who must delve into the secrets of both nights, stirring up memories of teen love and lies to uncover the truth about murders on the night shift. What really got me was the blockbuster video. <laughs> I want blockbuster video back. I mean, I know it wouldn't be the same, but can't we have it back though? It just seems like it'd be nice. Also, if you were alive or if you were an adult during Y2K, you probably remember how scared some people were about it. What a big deal it was. And then it ended up not being a deal at all. <laughs> On the 8th of March, The Old Woman with the Knife by Gu Byung-mo is going to be released here in America. This is a translated version. The author is from South Korea, and it's a crime thriller set in South Korea. Those looking for exciting new translated book releases in 2022 will want to pick up, or you know what? Okay. This book is about a 65-year-old female assassin named Hornclaw. Her career has been one of precision, ruthlessness, and 
no questions asked, and she isn't ready to give it up. But one careless slip up puts Hornclaw and her dog Deadweight in danger. The description doesn't really grab me. However, the fact that it's being translated into English and it's been translated in quite a few into quite a few other languages, that's what's got me. It's got to be good, right? And I love my favorite books are mystery, thriller, and horror. So I'm really wanting to read it. It sounds, well, I'm assuming <laughs> that it'll be pretty scary. Also on the 8th of March is The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This is a mystery thriller. If Avery Chambers can't fix you in 10 sessions, she won't take you on as a client. Her successes are phenomenal. When the bishops glide through Avery's door and Marissa reveals her infidelity, all three are set on a collision course because the biggest secrets in the room are still hidden and it's no longer simply a marriage that's in danger. Ooh. On the 15th of March, the Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James will be released and that is a mystery thriller. A true crime blogger gets more than she bargained for while interviewing the woman acquitted of two cold case slayings. I do think cold case stories are pretty fun to read about, especially because it's, it is kind of scary to think of how easily we could be accused of doing something we didn't do. And I know the chances are lower now, but you think about before DNA got this far advanced, how easy it would be, would have been, to be accused of a crime or a murder that you didn't commit. On March 15th, Nine Lives by Peter Swanson will be released, and that's a mystery thriller. Nine strangers receive a list with their names on it in the mail. Nothing else, just a list of names on a single sheet of paper. None of the nine people know or have ever met the others on the list. They dismiss it as junk mail, a fluke, until very, very bad things begin happening to people on the list. FBI agent Jessica Winslow, who is on the list herself, is determined to find out. Could there be some dark secret that binds them all together? <laughs> or... Is this the work of a murderous madman? As the mysterious sender stalks these nine strangers, they find themselves constantly looking over their shoulders, wondering who will be crossed off next. April 5th, The Shadow House by Anna Downs, a mystery thriller, ready to leave her troubled past behind, a single mother, Alex, decides to settle her two children in the rural community of Pine Ridge. Surrounded by forests, the town seems idyllic and the townspeople are welcoming, for the most part. When bizarre events begin to happen, Alex worries she has disturbed the long hidden secrets of Pine Ridge and must go to extraordinary lengths to protect her children. April 26th, I'll Be You by Janelle Brown, mystery thriller. As children, identical twins, Sam and Ellie, were inseparable, and so alike even their parents couldn't tell them apart. Discovered by Hollywood, they spent years as B-list TV stars, often sharing the same role. However, their lives have drifted apart since Ellie left acting, reinventing herself, as a perfect homemaker, and Sam fell into drugs and alcohol after her failed acting career. When Ellie disappears, Sam realizes her sister's life is far from perfect and must dive into her sister's traumatic secrets. I love books about siblings. The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon 
sorry, I love Jennifer McMahon books. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this one. Uh, this comes out April 26th, and it is a horror. In 1978, Vi and Eric live with her grandmother, Dr. Helen Hildreth, who runs a psychiatric treatment facility next door to their home. Ooh. One day, their grandmother brings home a girl from the facility to be their new sister. As Vi and Eric teach her all about monsters, Vi begins to question their grandmother's methods. Meanwhile, in the present day, a podcaster investigates a child abduction and monster sighting in a small town, thinking it's connected to her long lost sister. I, Jennifer McMahon writes novels that are so haunting and I feel like the the storyline of a, a mother who's or a grandmother who's running a psychiatric facility and then a girl being brought in to be raised as these children's sibling where did this girl come from? Is she from the psychiatric hospital or was she abducted also? I'm looking forward to reading that one. Unmasked, My Life Solving America's Cold Cases by Paul Holes. I think this book will be good for anybody who loves true crime stories or cold cases. Anybody that watches IDTV or Unsolved Mysteries or that kind of stuff, I think this might be the book for you. It comes out on the 26th of April and it's a nonfiction book. From the detective who found the Golden State Killer, which it was it's quite the case, a memoir of investigating America's toughest cold cases and the rewards and toll of a life solving crime. I ask myself, at what cost? I have sacrificed relationships, joy, even fatherhood, because the pursuit of evil always comes first. Did I make the right choice? It's something I grapple with every day. Yet, as I stand in the spot where a young girl took her last breath, as I look into the eyes of her family, I know that for me, there has never been a choice. I don't know if I can solve your case, I whisper, but I promise I will do my best. Wow, doesn't that sound good? just like a roller coaster of a book finding out what actually because that's something I've, I've wondered quite a few times myself when I watch these different shows or these different mini series about these crazy serial killers that you know they take forever to find and, and you you hear the detectives talking about how they solve the case but we never hear what happens to their lives how does this affect them I would think they probably have a lot of nightmares and I would think that, yeah, they probably do have to give up a lot. I don't know that somebody that spends that much time and energy on solving crimes, how could they have, you know, the kind of life that maybe you or I do. May 3rd, I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This is a YA romantic comedy. It's about chasing down what you want, only to find what you need. Thrown into an unlikely alliance, chasing a ghost through parties, break-ins, puzzles, and secrets revealed on monogrammed stationery, Chloe starts to suspect there might be more to this small town than she thought. And maybe, probably not, but maybe, more to Shara too. It just sounds like kind of a fun book and I, it sounds like the kind, a kind of movie, like a teen angst movie that I would want to watch, but the book might be fun too, depending on how it's been written. If you've read anything by Casey McQuiston, let me know what you think of her writing, because that might really determine whether I read this book or not. May 17th. This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub. 
This book is a science fiction book. What if you could take a vacation to your past? On the eve of her 40th birthday, Alice's life isn't terrible. She likes her job, even if it isn't exactly the one she expected. She's happy with her apartment, her romantic status, her independence, and she adores her lifelong best friend. But her father is ailing, and it feels to her as if something is missing. When she wakes up the next morning, she finds herself back in 1996, reliving her 16th birthday. But it isn't just her adolescent body that shocks her. Or seeing her high school crush. It's her dad. The vital, charming, 40-something version of her father with whom she is reunited. Now armed with a new perspective on her own life and his, some past events take on new meaning. Is there anything that she would change if she could? I mean, that's definitely a very, it's kind of like the, the first book I talked about, where if you could change things, would you? But this is a little bit different because it's not talking about erasing a memory, but changing a memory. That I might do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely would have changed some of my relationships with people if, if I could. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> May 24th. City of Orange by David Yoon. A man who cannot remember his own name wakes up in an apocalyptic landscape, injured and alone. He has vague memories of life before, but he can't see it clearly and can't grasp how his current situation came to be. He must learn to survive by finding sources of water and foraging for food. Then he encounters a boy, and he realizes nothing is what he thought it was, neither the past nor the present. That one just sounds kind of creepy and it sounds like a, uh, this book has a very unreliable protagonist, which I kind of like that. I like reading books where I don't know if what the protagonist, it, the way that they're viewing things or what they're saying, I don't know that it's true or not. I kind of like that. So I think that book would be very fun and hard to put down. I would love to know, one, which of these books do you want to read, if any of them? And two, which of these books do you want me to read? Definitely let me know that, because that might change which ones I get and which ones I read. And if you have read any of these authors and you really like their writing style, let me know that too. That is it for my most anticipated books of the spring. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Happy reading. Bye.